guys, it's your boy, Barcelona Boy 103. Today we're gonna be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. We're gonna talk about so many things, but first we're talk about Messi and his future, Ronald Koeman and his future, another incident in the PSG Barcelona game between Jordi Alba and Mbappe. Of course, the presidential debate that took place yesterday. And finally, we're gonna be talking about my Barcelona rebuild, who I would sell, who I'd keep, all that sort of stuff. So before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button. Let's try to get the 200 likes on this video. It'd be very much appreciated. And of course, hit the subscribe button and let's get into it. Let's get in now and talk about Lionel Messi's future. Of course, Messi's future is going to be up in the air until the end of the season because like we all know, he said this a hundred times that he's not going to decide his future until the end of the season. So as we all know, these are all currently speculations, but let's see where the reports put Messi's current mindset at. Firstly, Malone is coming out saying that Lionel Messi's environment says that until the end of the season over, he will not make a move. It will be seen if he continues under Juan Laporta if he wins in a project in which Messi is the one who accommodates the youth or he will decide to leave. Sergio Gonzalez was a reporter from Argentina saying that Lionel Messi's future now is currently closer to Manchester City than it is to Barcelona. So of course Lionel Messi's future is all dependent on the fact that if Laporta wins the Barcelona election or not, which he looks like he's going to win it of course. So that's going to be a big, big thing for Messi's future. So will he win it? Will he convince Messi? That's going to be the big question. But of course, Manchester City are probably the only team out there that can afford Lionel Messi right now. Of course, PSG can't really afford him. They're going to have to, you know, sell Mbappe. They can't keep all three of them in him, Neymar, and Mbappe. So I think pretty much PSG are kind of ruled out of the race. Unless they sell Mbappe, of course, and the race is going to be wide, wide open. But of course, right now, I'd say that Manchester City are the front runners. But there's a little bit of hope that Barcelona can keep him if Juan Laporta wins the Barcelona election. Another person's future who's currently up in the air is, of course, our manager, Ronald Koeman. With no president, his future is going to be up in the air until the president is elected. This is what's coming in from Fabrizio Romano, who gave his opinion on the situation. He said that if Barcelona are knocked out by Paris Saint-Germain in the Champions League, he thinks that Ronald Koeman will not continue next season obviously things can change but we will wait and see let me know what you think about that in the comments below of course Romano is not really linked to Barcelona in any sort of way but he is probably the top journalist in the whole world so that opinion coming from his mouth is pretty pretty big in my opinion Romano also talked about David Alba and the Juan Laporta connection he said that Juan Laporta is a big fan of David Alba he would like him to have him at Barcelona and this could create problems for Real Madrid so of course as we all know Juan Laporta is a big pick fan of David Alba and David Alba's agent and Juan Laporta are very very good friends and again if Laporta is elected we can definitely be in the race for David Alba so in yesterday's video we did this Discuss the incident between Gerard Piquet and Griezmann during that PSG game. Now yesterday another incident came out during that match and it was between Jordi Alba, Piquet and Mbappe. Starts off from the corner kick, of course, Jordi Alba and Piquet are talking about tactics. Mbappe comes in, him and Jordi Alba start, you know, having some uh, words back and forth. Alba said to Mbappe saying that, look, you're, you're getting a little bit too big for yourself, all right, relax. Mbappe said back to him saying that if I find you on the streets, I will kill you. Alba said back to him, look, this kid's learning Spanish, hey, maybe he's going to be coming to Spain soon. Look, his Spanish is pretty, pretty good. Then he said that again, that I will kill you. Then PK came to Mbappe saying, who are you going to kill, huh? Who are you going to kill? And then Mbappe kind of, you know, walked off. Let me know your thoughts on this incident down in the comments below. Do you think it's a good thing because, you know, the players are defending each other on the pitch? Or do you think it's a bad thing because, of course, the players aren't concentrated on the match? Now, yesterday, the first debate of the presidential election of Barcelona 2021 took place, and it was between Victor Font and Tony Freya. Now, you might be wondering, where was Juan Laporta? Why was he not at this debate? Of course, he's a presidential candidate. The reason why he didn't want to take place in this debate was because he feels like he's going to win this election by a landslide, and he thought this would be a complete waste of his time debating with, you know, two other candidates for, you know, an hour and a half, two hours, just knowing he's going to win which is quite a badass move if you ask me. Now, of course, I did watch this debate with Victor Font and Tony Freya. I actually did a live watch along on my Discord. And this wasn't really a debate. They both just came in, said their opinions, what they want to do with Barcelona, and they both left. There was no debate, no yelling at each other, nothing like that. They both just said everything we already knew. Of course, they both want to, you know, become the Barcelona president. They talked about, you know, the Eric Garcia deal, why it collapsed in January. Talked about rebuilding Barcelona. Talked about, you know, making the Sochi's have all the decisions, all that sort of stuff. Of course, Victor Font talked about Xavi the whole time, saying that, look, our project is solely based around Xavi. And Tony Freya said that, look, our project is based on the Sochi's and they get to make all the decisions. So in the end, they just both stated their projects and there wasn't really a debate. So after another Champions League humiliation, a lot of concern has been raised about this current Barcelona squad, who should we sell, who should we keep? I thought the best way to do it would be doing it in a tier list form. Of course, I will be leaving the link to the tier list down in the description down below. You can do it as well. You can send me your links on Twitter, Instagram, or just link them in the Discord as well. I'd love to see your guys' opinion. But right now, I'm going to show you guys my opinion and what I would do with this current Barcelona squad. Now, of course, we do have six categories. The six categories are untouchable, which are players that I would not sell even if we could offer a billion for them. Players that I want to keep. Transferable are players that I will kind of want to keep as well, but if I get offered a good amount of money, I would sell them. Players that should go out on loan, of course. Barcelona B players are the players I think that, you know, should probably stay at Barcelona B for a little bit longer, or those are just players I currently don't know of. And of course, the dreaded category, which players I would sell. Let's get in now and see what I would currently do with this Barcelona squad. Firstly, Messi, of course, he's an untouchable player, but of course his contract does end at the end of this season. I would offer him that contract extension and pray to God that he accepts it. Looking more likely he's going to leave, of course. Ricky Puch up next. For me, Ricky Puch is, of course, another untouchable. Wouldn't sell him for any amount of money. He is the future of that Barcelona midfield. Dembele, I'm leading Dembele more towards the keep section, of course. His contract does end at the end of next season, and I would be looking to extend it for sure. Neto, straight into sell. We don't need him. Useless player. He's sitting there crying all the time. 
take 20 million or 50 million for him and get him out of here. Next up, Coutinho. For me, Coutinho has to go into that sell section. Hasn't really been the player that we thought he was going to be at Liverpool. And of course, in this 4-3-3 system, he will not fit in it in any sort of way. Left wing, hell no. Left interior as well does not work there. Next up, Clement Longley. For me, Longley is probably going to be in that transferable category. If we get a good offer for him, I would sell him. But of course, his contract currently ends in 2026. So if we were trying to force to sell him, he probably wouldn't leave. He'd probably be like, look, I want to stay and earn my wages, all that sort of stuff. So for me, the most likely solution for Clement Longley is to go into that transferable category. Pedri for me, of course, without Shao Bandao, untouchable. No explanation need there. Trincao, I'm leading Trincao into that keep section. I think he's showing his quality right now, but of course we can't rush to any conclusions because he's only had, you know, a good spell for a good week or so. Jordi Alba for me, I'm going to have to put him in that transferable category. If he were to take, you know, a weaker role in that squad and be a backup to, her, let's say, like a Jose Gaia, a Grimaldo sort of stuff, I would keep him, but of course he'd have to, you know, reduce his wages. But if he wants to be the starting left back, he's going to have to go for sure. Elash Ramiba, for me, Elash Ramiba is going to be a key player. I think he's a very, very quality player and could be in that midfield for Barcelona in the future for sure. Next up, Jandro Oriano from the Barcelona B. For me, I'd put him in that Barcelona B category. I think maybe he can stay there for another season and then maybe go out on loan. But for me, he is showing great, great quality in the Barcelona B. Next up, Matias Fernandez, straight into that cell section. No explanation needed. He's been here the whole season and only played a total of 10 minutes of first team football. Ter Stegen, straight into that untouchable category, of course. Best keeper in the world. No explanation needed. Sergio Roberto for me, he's going to have to go in that transferable category as well. I think if we get a good offer for him, I would take him. But of course, I think he'd be okay to use in the squad. He's a very, very versatile player. And of course, he is a fourth captain. He came up from La Masia. He can, you know, embed those Barcelona B players, give them some tips and tricks. So in that sense, he's going to be good to keep. But definitely going to offer maybe 70 million, 60, 80. Definitely, definitely would sell him. Frankie de Jong, straight into that untouchable category. No explanation needed. Same goes for Ansu Fati. No explanation needed. Sam Momtiti straight into that cell section. He pretty much just screwed up his whole knee going into that World Cup. For me, he has been the player that he was before the World Cup. Of course, if he can get, you know, Vernon Gaines, maybe that opinion can change. But of course, at this current moment, I would sell Sam Momtiti. Next up, Junior Firpo. Junior Firpo, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm hovering between the cell and transferable. I'm going to put him in transferable. Simply because if Jordi Alba leaves, I will be looking to keep Junior Firpo as that backup to maybe Jose Gaia. I think in that sense, he can do well. But if he wants to be a starting left back, I'm probably going to be looking to sell him for sure. And Naki Pena for me is definitely a keep. I think he's going to be the backup for Ter Stegen next season. I think he has a very, very promising future at Barcelona. Conor Del Fanta, I think he's going to have to be in that loan category. I don't think he's really at the level of Barcelona right now. But he could definitely be there in the future. So right now, I'd send him out on loan to get some first team football for sure. So Junior Dest for me is definitely going to go in that untouchable category. I think he's a very, very quality up and coming right back. Of course, didn't have the greatest game over the past few weeks, but of course he is coming back from a muscle discomfort. I think he's showing a lot of quality. And I think he's definitely going to go in that untouchable category. R9 Tia, same as Naki Pena, is going to go into that keep category. I think, again, he's going to be the understudy to Naki Pena when he becomes the first team goalkeeper. I think he's such a quality keeper, especially with his feet. Very, very prompting keeper. Uh, to be honest, I don't think Barcelona will sign a keeper over the next 10 years because we are set with Inaki Pena and R9 Tejas. Next up, Gerard Piquet. Gerard Piquet for me, same kind of with Sergio Roberto and Jordi Alba. I'd put him in that transferable category. If we get an offer for him, I would sell him. If he does not want to take a lesser role at this club, I would be looking to sell him for sure. But in that, you know, backup role, I don't think Piquet would be that bad. Next up, Ronaldo Rajo, without a shadow of a doubt, into that untouchable category. He's a very, very up-and-coming strong center back. Without him, we've been so, so poor this season. So for me, definitely going to keep him. Sergio Busquets, same with, you know, Gerard PK, Jordi Alba, has to go into that transferable role. If he doesn't want to take a lesser role in the squad, I would, you know, let him go for sure. But if he wants to be that backup CDM, play a little bit of games here and there against, you know, Cadez or Alaba's at home, I would keep him for sure. Next up, Carlos Alinea, definitely for me, going to be in that keep category. I think he's going to be a very, very strong midfielder for Barcelona in the future. Has shown some promising signs, but of course, Ron Coleman didn't give him the playing time. That's why he went on loan to Getafe, but he definitely has a future at Barcelona. Next up, Antoine Griezmann. I'm leaning for Griezmann in... <sighs> For Griezmann, I'm looking between here and keep and transferable. I'm I'm going to put him in keep for now based on current form. He's been doing very, very well. I think he's now getting more embedded into this Barcelona team. But of course, if we get a big offer for him, I would probably you know, be inclined to accept it. But right now, I think he's doing well and I would keep him. Pjanic, straight into that sell section. He is 31 years old. We swapped him to R2. One of the worst deals Bartomeu has ever done. Of course, he's a quality player on his day, but he's definitely not going to be in the Barcelona future in the next couple seasons. So I would just, you know, cut my losses with him. 20, 30 million, just get rid of him. Same thing goes for Braithwaite, to be honest. Braithwaite, I'm done with him. He's a useless player. 20 million, what, like, he's done nothing. He had a little bit of good form, you know, between December and January. He scored, you know, two goals. And we all thought, oh, we don't need to buy. Boy, did that cost us. For me, Braithwaite is not at the level for Barcelona, so I definitely would sell him. Next up, Sergio Akimi from Barcelona B, who's currently on loan at Almira. For me, I'd be looking again in that Barcelona B loan category, probably looking at loan. Don't think at the quality of Barcelona right now, but maybe he could be in the future. 
or maybe we were looking more in that sales section saying, look, let's just cut our losses with him, you know, make a profit on an Alamasia player. But for me, I'd probably get, let him go on loan for another season and really, really develop him and see where he's at. Emerson up next, for me, he's going to definitely be in that keep section. I want him and this to be competing for that right back spot next season. He's been doing so, so well with Robertis over the past few seasons. God has a league experience for me. I would definitely be looking to keep him for sure. Next up, Alejandro Balde. For me, a lot of hype for Alejandro Balde. I haven't seen him play. I'm going to hold my hands up and be completely honest. I've seen some highlights of him. For me, i would definitely be looking maybe at a loan move to like another club in La Liga to get him some experience. I don't think he can go straight into the Barcelona first team, but you never know. But at this current moment, I would be looking for a loan for him. Next up, Alex Collado, probably the same as Conrad. I'm going to be looking for a loan move for him. I think he's at a higher level than Barcelona B. Sam Doria came asking for him in January and they said no. I think now he needs to go and get some first team minutes just like Monchu did. We'll talk about Monchu. Didn't. Actually, we'll talk about Monchu right now. Monchu for me... Probably looking in that sell loan category. I think he's a quality, quality player, but not at the Barcelona level that we need at right now. Would that probably looking to sell him to be honest, because you know he's at loan right now. Girona doing very, very well. Don't think he get into this Barcelona team, so I would be looking to get a cut our losses and sell him. Maybe we can bring him back in the future. But right now, I think he's definitely in that sell category. Back to Collado. Collado not in that sell category for me. I think he's a very, very quality player, and I would be looking at a loan move, let him go out, La Liga experience or whatever, then come back and see how he performs there. Next up, Comas from the Barcelona B. For me, again, he'd be in that Barcelona B category. I haven't seen that much from him, so I th I'll keep him there for now. Same with Mika, another Barcelona B player. I keep him in the Barcelona B for now for sure. Uh, Oriol Busquets. I'm probably looking for a loan move for Oya Busquets. I think he's at a higher quality than Barcelona B right now. Of course, had some injury problems over the past few seasons. But for me, definitely, I'd be looking at a loan move for him into like a La Liga side and see how he plays and, you know, with first team football. Next up, Ramos Vinguez, another defender for Barcelona B. Probably looking at that Barcelona B category as well. Let's keep him there for now, see how he does. Juan Miranda. Juan Miranda is now a very, very difficult decision for me. I think I'm going to have to put Juan Miranda in that transferable category. Of course, we'll see what we do in the left back position. Are we going to keep Fairpo? Are we going to keep Miranda? Are we going to keep Jordi Alba? Are we going to buy someone? It all depends. If we maybe buy a Jose Gaia and Fairpo wants to leave, Jordi Alba wants to leave, maybe I'll keep Miranda as that backup to Jose Gaia. But right now, for me, he's going to be in that transferable category. If you get an offer for him of maybe 30 million, something like that, I would definitely take it for sure. Finally, Joan Claire Todibo. For me, Todibo has to go in that keep section. I think he's a very, very quality player. But on this day, he is a very, very strong, strong center back. Imagine him and Araujo in a team. That would be absolutely deadly for me. What I would do with the Todibo situation is give him, you know, a full season at Barcelona with regular minutes. See how he does, see how his attitude is. I wouldn't, you know, bench him every week like Valverde and then play him one game in the Champions League, all that sort of stuff. Give him a run of games of the season. Let's see how he does. Let's see if his attitude is a big, big problem. But for me, definitely, Todibo is going to be a keep. Now, there are two players that were included in that tier list I want to quickly just mention and talk about. Firstly, Oscar Mingu that for me definitely would be a keep i think he's been doing so so well in barcelona this season of course started in barcelona b at the beginning of the season then got pushed up after all these injuries and i think he's been doing so so well definitely a keep for me for sure and finally the manager ronald coleman i'm probably looking to keep coming at the moment there aren't really you know that many managers available on the market of course chavi is available but you know he's still focused on al said a lot of people have been talking about Nagelsmann. I think Nagelsmann is very, very tied down to RB Leipzig. If we're being realistic, I probably would give Coleman another season, give him a transfer window, see who he signs, all that sort of stuff. Because remember, at the end of the day, he does not have a transfer window. He does not have, you know, control of what he wants to do at the club because there's been no president for crying out loud. For me, in this current moment, I'd probably be looking to keep Ronald Coleman. So that's my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave a like. Let me know thoughts down below and everything we discussed. Of course, Messi, do you think he's going to stay or leave? Same with Coleman, do you think he's going to stay or leave? And of course, let me know your thoughts on the Jordi Alba and Mbappe incident. And of course, let me know your tier list down below. Here's my final list on the screen. Again, the link will be down in the description. You can send me your screenshots on Twitter, Instagram. You can leave them in the Discord as well. I really want to know you guys' opinion on that. And of course, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca. <laughs>